workers are protesting a $1.2 billion contract the company has with Israel. Project Nimbus began three years ago in 2021 when Google and Amazon began providing Israeli, Israeli government uh, with cloud computing services, including artificial intelligence, according to the Israeli Finance Ministry. It is important to know that Israel is known as a leader in the tech world and has created and implemented the controversial Pegasus spy software, which is designed to be covertly and remotely installed on mobile devices. Now, national security organizations have touted that product as crime fighting and for fighting terrorism, but it has been routinely used by governments around the world to spy on journalists, political dissidents, lawyers, and human rights activists. Now, at the conference last month, Google's managing director for Israel, Barak Regev, was promoting the Israeli tech industry when 23-year-old Google worker Edit Hatfield stood up and shouted, I am a Google Cloud software engineer, and I refuse to build technology that powers genocide, apartheid, or surveillance. No tech for apartheid. Innovation. I'm a Google Cloud software engineer, and I refuse to build technology that powers genocide, apartheid, or surveillance. Project Nimbus puts Palestinian community members in danger. I refuse to build technology that's going to be used for cloud apartheid. No cloud for apartheid. No tech for apartheid. Free Palestine. Three days later, Hatfield was fired, and he's part of a growing movement inside Google called No Tech for Apartheid. It's calling for Google and Amazon to drop their contract with Israel. The movement now has more than 200 Google employees involved in organizing, and according to the members, there are hundreds more who are sympathetic to their goals. According to Time magazine, two former Google workers say they spoke, uh, say that they resigned from Google in the last month to protest Project Nimbus. Now, the protest has gone global. Around 50 Google workers and members of the public protested Project Nimbus at the company's UK headquarters on Tuesday. Um, so this is a really interesting story. I, Google is saying that they uh, fired Hatfield because he violated company policy, being disruptive at a meeting, and obviously that, that is true. Um, but he says that he is being treated as an example because there is a kind of rising tide of employees who are frustrated with how their technology is being used abroad. And by firing him, they can kind of do a soft threat to anybody else who might be considering taking similar kinds of action. Yeah, I mean, you know, if you disrupt a meeting at your workplace, you can get fired. Um, frankly, I hope that I guess more engineers who think that the technology they're developing is evil are going to, or are going to be deployed for bad, for spying and for all those things should also, should like quit or refuse to work on it or try to change the company culture and then not do it. I guess I don't, the Israel aspect of it, I'm, I, I'm not sure. I, I wouldn't want Google to supply any government, Israel or, or our own or China or Russia or anyone with uh, more technology for them to like spy on the citizens and do all that sort of thing. So I guess I would also signal some concern about what's being described, although it's I think beyond my technical comprehension. Right. So that that was the the kind of Pegasus software. This software, I think, even has more. Well, I won't say more serious implications than spying, because spying is obviously very serious. But this uh, Project Nimbus software. This is I'm, I'm reading from um, TBS News. This would allow the Israeli government. Um, to perform large-scale data analysis, AI training, database hosting, and other forms of powerful computing using Google's technology with little oversight by the company. The AI aspect of this does evoke this recent story, obviously, about this technology that's been used by the IDF to create lists of targets, which was considered to be something that was bottlenecking the IDF from striking targets in Gaza. And what is so controversial about this program known as Project Lavender and a different program known as um, uh, 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 Daddy's Home is the extent to which one that has a built-in acceptable error rate of about 10%, which implies that a great deal of innocent people are known to be targeted um, by this software, and also that it prioritizes people who uh, targeting um, militants while they're at home with their families to kind of maximize the civilian death toll. Given that that story just broke onto the scene um, last week, it's completely understandable why people working on related technologies would not want to have their fingerprints on it. Yeah, although I'm still, I, I mean, I, I brought this up last time we talked about this. I'm still having trouble understanding what exactly is meant by a 10% error or failure rate. I mean, in, in, a, in a war, if 
what if they what killed 10% if if an invading or conquering army only killed 10% the wrong targets, I think they would consider that a massive success, right? No, because if you were to use human checking, the reason they know there's a 10% error rate is because when they check their work, they see, oh, this person isn't actually Hamas. He's someone who's in a family member, a family member of someone who's in Hamas, or it's someone who bought a cell phone that was previously owned by someone with Hamas. And if you can c check, you're taking a little bit more time with the human being and know that you're making a mistake, but make the decision not to check and just kill innocent people anyway. I think that's what people see as pernicious. And the human beings get it right 10 out of 10 times? Yeah, the only reason they know they got it wrong is because of human beings. This is a separate question well, from the collateral damage the question, right? There's the question of whether you target people knowing that collateral damage, uh, their family members, et cetera, are gonna die around them. And there's the question of whether or not you've even identified an accurate target to begin with. Right, but there's, I mean, human, double checking these programs, I mean, maybe this doesn't matter, but it, it, humans also make errors. And I think the assumption that human error is, is, uh, is, is less than the AI or the machine is probably not true, but maybe that's still the point of the technology. So I don't know. Anyway, we have to you know, continue to monitor what sort of technologies are being built for, um, for governments that have the ability to spy on or kill uh, people. And Google has an entire motto or had a motto at one point, right, of don't be evil. And I guess people can decide for themselves. Well, they changed their motto, didn't they? Right, at one point that was the motto. Which is Did like, they come out and say, that's no longer our motto? <laughs> uh, yeah, it was their former motto. It is yeah. no longer Google's motto. And I think that's a pretty damning indictment of the kinds of work that Google maybe self-consciously knows that it's involved with. I mean, one of the important points here is that these software developers understand that they don't have a lot of insight into how their technology gets used. There are kind of privacy walls up that basically mean that they just release this technology into the world and they don't have any control oversight over it whatsoever. Um, a AI targeting system, um, the, this article also points to the fact that the, the, the news about the AI targeting system um, is especially troubling for des as designers that are working on similar technologies. Um, regardless of how you feel about it, the idea of a sort of a Technolo uh, technologically boosted Russian roulette that is routinely killing innocents, even if you think, well, that's what happens in war, or that's the kind of blood that countries routinely have on their hands. Your average 24-year-old software developer who just went into the business because they were a computer nerd or because they wanted to make a good salary in San Francisco isn't signing up for murdering innocent people or targeting people in their homes when they're with their families and their children and wives are getting killed. More rising right after this.